Now, how could one picture stand for each one of these five words? Work, worship, service, ministry, and art. How could one picture signify all of these things? It's simple. Actually, in the Bible, there's a word that depicts all five of these words in English. In Hebrew, that word is avodah. And when translated, avodah means five things. It means work, worship, service, ministry, and art or craftsmanship. Um, Avodah is used in the Old Testament, of course, in the first half of the Bible because the first half of the Bible was written in Hebrew. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Avodah. And in, in the Old Testament, in Hebrew, these five words are, are really one seamless fabric. They're not five distinct things. They're, they're, really, they're, fa- they're one seamless fabric. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, walk through some verses in Scripture through each word, and we're going to see this word come up again and again uh, really as five different things. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at each one. So first, um, we're going to look at work. So in Genesis 1-1, in the very beginning of Scripture, the first verse of the Bible, we see that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so what we see is that God is a worker. And if you read all of Genesis 1, you read about all the work that he did. He created light. He created the sun, the moon, the stars. He created water. He created everything in the universe that we see. And so God, in his very nature, in his very essence, is a worker. And then, in Genesis 1.26, we get to where you and I come in in the story. And uh, God makes men and women in his image. And uh, in Genesis 1.26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So part of uh, being made in God's image, being made in God's likeness, is that we are are workers. God's a worker, so we're made in his image, and so therefore we are workers too. And, And we get a picture of our job description. Our job description in creation is to rule over the earth, to be to be stewards, to steward uh, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, o- over the animals, and over all the earth. Now that's a big job, if you think about it. We're, we're to rule, we're to steward over all the earth. And then, later on, in Genesis 2, uh, we get a, a more, uh, a, a, a better picture of what our job description uh, really is. In Genesis 2, God gives Adam work to do. He gives him a job to do. And in Genesis 2.15, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden uh, to work it and to take care of it. And so the work that he he gave Adam was really to cultivate the earth. And so creation was good, but God uh, told Adam to cultivate the earth, to, to take good things and to make them into better things. And later on, um, in the book of Genesis, we see a, a, a different kind of work. Uh, Jacob is a descendant of Adam, and, Je- and in Genesis 29 it says, Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you. And if you know the story, he's talking to Rachel's uh, father, Laban. Uh, I'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. So Jacob works uh, and then uh, marries Rachel. And so... Uh, in, in the scriptures, in the Bible, in these verses, uh, the Hebrew word that's used here for work is avodah. Uh, that, that word that, that comes up for work is, is avodah. Um, and so uh, it's important to know that avodah uh, refers to both paid and unpaid work. So it refers to what you do for your career, for your vocation, the thing that you do to get that paycheck, and also refers to the work that you do, whether it's making your bed or making dinner or maybe pulling weeds in the garden or uh, maybe taking out the trash, Uh, maybe it's raising kids. Um, So avodah refers to both paid and unpaid labor, and so there's no division. Again, it's, it's one seamless fabric, 
And then the other thing is that avodah also refers to both sacred and secular work. So we, in some cultures, we kind of have this divide between what's sacred and what's secular. That's not true in, with, in Hebrew. In, in avodah, it's one seamless fabric. So, so the same word in the Old Testament that's used for the work of the priests, so the work in the temple, uh, the work that's required uh, in the temple of God, is the same word, avodah, that's used for Adam and Eve in the garden, for uh, for agriculture, for all other kinds of work. So there's no distinction between paid and unpaid work in Avodah, and there's also no distinction between sacred and secular work with Avodah. It's all, it's all part of one fabric. It's, it's all Avodah, okay? And then the second image we get of Avodah uh, is worship. And um, in Exodus 8, uh, we see an example of worship. This uh, word is all over Exodus. And so the, uh, the Israelites are in Egypt, they're in, enslaved, and God is uh, going to call them out through Moses. And so part of what uh, God tells Moses to say to Pharaoh is uh, to let my people go so that they may worship me, that they may worship me. And then uh, later on, what we see is that uh, another word in the Old Testament, um, another example of this is in Psalm 100. And then Psalm 100 says, worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Um, and in both places, both in Exodus and Psalms and a lot of other places, the word here for worship is avodah, the same word that we used for work earlier. Uh, does anyone know where the English word worship comes from? Do you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Of worth. Um, it, so I think it's uh, from Old English. I think it's, it's of worth or worth ship. Worth ship. Um, and so when you worship, you are acknowledging, we are acknowledging the worth of God. We're acknowledging that God is supremely valuable. And in fact, <laughs> he's the most valuable thing in the universe. He's infinitely valuable. And so we're ascribing worth. We're acknowledging God's worth. And so... If avodah, if work and worship are part of the same fabric, um, good work, avodah work, is work that is worth doing. Uh, I think all of us want to do work that is, that is worth doing. Um, when, we, when we do avodah, we, we are working with excellence and diligence. Um, it's a job well done. It's a job uh, worth doing. So if, if work and worship are part of the same root word, Avodah, then, then what does that mean? It means that, that worship isn't just something that's done on Sunday mornings um, for maybe three or four hours. You know, my guess is that for this number, you probably had maybe, maybe three, maybe four, maybe, you know, it was probably something less than, uh, less than ten, maybe. But, but according to the scriptures, worship is something do, we do with our whole lives. It's not just something that's for a few hours on a Sunday. We, we worship with our whole lives, and so that includes our work. That includes what we do throughout the week, Monday through Friday, both paid and unpaid, both sacred and, and secular. If you think about the Great Commandment, the Great Commandment is to love God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind and all of our strength. And so we're to love God and worship God with our whole lives. And so because we work day in and day out as students or whatever fields we're going to go into, uh, we can worship God even in our work. Uh, we can worship God even in our work every day. So your work as a student can be worship to God, and your work in business one day or in engineering can be worship to God. Uh, maybe some of you are going to be professors and scholars. Your, your work in scholarship can be worship in government, engineering, science, education, whatever failures you're going into, it, according to the scriptures, according to Avodah, your work is worship because it's all part of the same fabric. And so, by the way, if you're, uh, if, if you're intrigued by this, if, if this is kind of piquing your interest, I actually have a, a sheet up here um, that has a lot more examples in scripture. Um, and you can feel free to come pick it up at the end of the session um, if you want, want to see more examples of kind of how this, is, this plays out in Scripture. So the third uh, kind of example that we see, uh, the third word, the third image that we get is, is service. Um, so avada also means service. And actually, um, you know, 
service and ministry are actually kind of the, the same idea. The two are kind of synonymous um, in the Old Testament. Um, so work, if you think about it, is, is kind of how we, we serve or minister to others. Um, so who knows the name of the, the chief civil servant in the United Kingdom? What's his, what's his title? What is it? I think I heard it. The prime minister, right? Oh, in the, in the UK. I'm sorry, in the United Kingdom. Yeah, okay, sorry. I gave you the answer. So, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us knew that. So the, the chief civil servant in the UK is called the prime minister. And, and we see government officials as, as people who serve. And so ministry is work that serves God or serves other people. Um, and so, all right, let's look at a few examples of this uh, in the Bible when it comes to Avodah. So uh, a couple times this comes up. One, one place this comes up is in Numbers 18. Um, this idea of service comes up a lot in Numbers because in the book of Numbers, it's talking about uh, how the Levites are to serve in the house of God. Um, so this is uh, God talking to, to Aaron. He says, but only you and your sons, uh, the Levites, may serve as priests in connection with everything at the altar and inside the curtain. And then another uh, place that we see it is in Joshua 24, 15. Uh, Joshua is talking to Israel. They've uh, crossed the Jordan and they've defeated some enemies. And, um, and, and now they have this, this uh, basically this fork in the road where they have to decide, are they going to serve foreign gods uh, or are they going to serve the one true God of Israel? And in Joshua 24, 15, Joshua is giving this speech and he says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And in both places, the word there for service is Abadah. That's right. Um, and so our work ought to serve other people. Right? Our work ought to be service. Our work can be ministry. Um, have you ever thought about how your work is service to other people? Have you ever thought about how the, the job or the profession, the career that you're going to go into, is ultimately not about you gaining more titles or more money or more position in society, but ultimately your job, the career you have, is about serving other people. And that's the picture of Avodah that we see in the scriptures. So we see that work and worship and service and ministry, it's all part of the same, it's all part of the same fabric. All right, and then lastly, what we see, there we go, actually we'll get to that later. Uh, the last one we see is that avodah can also mean art or, or craftsmanship. Um, and so let's just look around the room for a moment, like what do you notice about the lights? You know, just look around, what do you notice about uh, the mirrors, the carpet, um, even the tablecloths? Um, what do you notice? Why, why is there color? You know, why is there, why is there design? Why is there artistry? Um, you know, it, someone had to design this carpet. Someone put color and beauty in this carpet, and um, who knows how long that chandelier took, uh, took to make, but, but someone skilled in uh, not only glass making, but um, metalworking, someone, a skilled craftsman, um, had to make that. And so, um, you know, there's, there's really an aesthetic element to, to things around us. Even if you look at the clothes that we're wearing right now. Like, why are you wearing clothes that have color, have, have design in them, they have, they have beauty to them? Um, we could all be wearing white, you know. We could all be wearing white clothes with just plain clothes on, them, on us, right? But God didn't make the world monochromatic, did he? He didn't make the world monochromatic. No, he made the world with color. He made the world with beauty. He wanted us to experience uh, aesthetics and beauty. And really, that's what art and craftsmanship is. It's, it's taking raw materials. It's taking the things that are already exist in creation, and it is crafting them and forming them into things that are not only functional, but beautiful. I mean, if you think about that chandelier, I mean, you could just have, like, your basic cheap lights in this room, right? But instead, it's this beautiful thing, and, and those, the lights and the glass and the metal, those were once raw materials that were, were crafted into something um, that is both functional and, and beautiful. 
All right, and so it's the work of a, an artist um, to to craft, um, and that that's their work. And so let's let's take a look at, at avodah and how that uh, what that looks like in the, in scriptures. Um, in First Chronicles twenty eight two, the context is David, King David is actually about to die, and he's talking to his son Solomon, who's going to succeed him as king and build the temple. Um, and so he says to Solomon, the divisions of the priests and Levites are ready for all the work on the temple of God, and every willing man skilled in any craft will help you in the work. And obviously the word there is Zavadah. And so particularly here, the, the work that is, uh, they're talking about here is, is craftsmanship. It is uh, artistic work on the temple. And actually, I have, I have saved uh, the best for last. This is actually my favorite one right here. This is Exodus 31. This is really cool. So, um, so God is commanding Israel to sort of uh, basically giving them instructions on worship and the, the tent of meeting. And in Exodus 31, he says, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge, and all kinds of crafts. And listen, for what purpose? To make artistic designs for work in gold and silver and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. Moreover, I have appointed Ahiliab, son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan, to help him. So God takes these two guys, these skilled craftsmen, these artists, Bezalel and Ohiliab, and he fills them with his spirit to do manual labor, to be, to be artists. He fills them with his spirit to be craftsmen. It's a pretty, a pretty astonishing thing. And here's why I like, here's why this is so exciting, because if you think about it, if, if in the Old Testament, God put his spirit inside people to be artists and craftsmen and do labor, what about, the new, what, what about the New Testament now that through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is available to every single one of us by faith? What does that mean for us if, if we have the Holy Spirit? Do you think that God wants, wants to fill us with his spirit to be artists and craftsmen and workers and, and business people and teachers and whatever God has individually gifted you and qualified to, to, to give you? Do you think that God wants to fill you with his spirit to do the work that he's called you to do? Absolutely. If he can do this in the Old Testament, this is, the law is only a shadow of ultimately what God is really going to do. And that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And, and guys, that's Avodah. It's one seamless fabric of work and worship and service and ministry and art and craftsmanship. Um, and so it, it's really all part of the, the, the fabric that God has woven into the world. Um, and so we're going to take a look at this real quick. Take a look at what I've, what I've written up uh, here on the board. Um, has anyone seen or heard this phrase? You can raise your hand. You've seen it? All right. Has anyone else kind of seen or heard this phrase? So there's, you know, this idea of sort of integrating uh, faith and work um, now, it's interesting, there's actually, uh, in, in ancient Hebrew, in the ancient language, um, there's not a word for, uh, for integrate. Um, and the same is in ancient Greek. Uh, in, in, modern, in the modern versions of the language, there is, because it's, it, it's evolved. But in the ancient versions, there's no word for integrate um, in ancient uh, Hebrew or Greek. But there is a word for integral. So there's no word for integrate, but there is a word for integral. Uh, does anyone know, who know, what does integral mean? Does anyone know what this word means? Or, or does anyone know where this word comes from? Who, does anyone know where this word comes from? Yeah, it comes from math, right. Which, where, where, what's its math application? Integer, right. What's, what's Integer. What's integer? Someone's, I heard it. A, a whole number, right? A complete, a complete number. An integer is, it's one. It's a complete number. It, an integer is like, it's not a fraction. A fraction can't be an integer, right? Now, 
So there's no word in ancient Hebrew for integrate, but there's also, there is a word for integral or wholeness or completeness in its, its tome. And I just want to confirm that you studied Hebrew, is that right? Is that, that's correct? Tome? Ho- wholeness, completeness? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so this we tome means it means integral. It means it means whole or complete. Um, and so um, ultimately, what we see is that these these things are we don't have to integrate what's already integral. If our faith and work, if if these five things are are in in the scriptures are already part of one seamless fabric. Um, if they're already integral, then we don't have to integrate uh, what's already there. And so um, we, we simply have to discover what, how things already are. And so worship and, and service and ministry, they don't have to just be these things we do on evenings and weekends and um, three hours on a Sunday morning. They can be part of our entire lives as, as one seamless fabric. So engineering can be worship and business can be service. Um, and architecture can be ministry, or whatever you do can be, can be worship to God. Uh, Dorothy Sayers was an American novelist. Um, she wrote a lot of books and essays in the 20th century. And Dorothy Sayers wrote a, 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 an essay called Why Work? And in her essay, uh, she argues um, that uh, the church must recover the doctrine of vocation. And she asks a question, and she says, how can anyone remain interested in a religion that is only concerned with nine-tenths of his life. And she was talking about this, and she said, if, if this number is only about two or three hours a week, she says, how can anyone remain interested in a religion that's only concerned about nine-tenths of a person's life? And that's, that's what some of you might be thinking and wondering, kind of wrestling with, is how does Christianity intersect with my work? And how does Christianity integrate with my major? And the answer is, it doesn't. It's integral. It's already part of one seamless fabric. And the good news is that if the question is, what does faith have to do with my work? The, the answer, if you believe the scriptures, the answer is everything. It has everything to do with your work because of avodah, because work is worship, is service, is ministry, is craftsmanship. And so Christianity, is, it's a religion about your whole life. It's about loving God with all you are, with your, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, and that includes your work, and we see that in Avodah. And so um, for, for Christians in the room, for those of you who have uh, believed um, in Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross by faith, um, one thing that, that is very really encouraging uh, for us, for you, is to, to consider um, if God desires to fill us with his spirit, um, to, to make us into craftsmen and, and the, the work and jobs and vocations that he's called us to do, um, what does it look like for you to be empowered by God in your work? And what, is it, what does it look like for your work to be worship and service and ministry and craftsmanship? Um, and if you're, not, if you're here and you're not a Christian, if, if maybe you haven't uh, truly believed um, that Jesus is a Savior, that he died on the cross for your sins, um, that you need a new heart through faith, through the Holy Spirit. Um, I just want to encourage you just to consider um, that this is what Christianity has to offer. Uh, Christianity offers a, a, an integral picture of life um, where God not only cares about three hours on a Sunday morning, um, he cares about your entire life. He cares about your work. And, and Christianity, in, in and only in Christianity, do you get a vision of work that is as holistic as this is. Um, and so if you're here and you're not a Christian, I would just encourage you to, to continue to wrestle uh, with what you're wrestling with, but, but also wrestle with, with this idea of, of work. Um, and, the, and know that when you become a Christian, that God actually fills you with his spirit. Um, and he doesn't just fill you with his spirit um, to pray and worship, and that those are all good things, but he also fills you with his spirit to work, um, and we see that in the, in the scripture. Um, and so to conclude our time together this morning, uh, or this afternoon, 
uh, we're just going to watch a quick video, and we're going to watch a video of some people who are learning how to live out Avodah. And uh, I'm showing this, one, because it's a good video, but also uh, because I just I want you to know this. I didn't make this up. This is not new. This is not original. This is just ancient biblical wisdom that's always been there. Um, and so we're going to watch this video, and hopefully it can be encouraging and inspiring to you. Um, and then uh, we're going to do some Q&A. Uh, if you guys have any questions and would like to stick around, uh, we'll do some Q&A. So, all right, here we go. <laughs> 